You are sealed with purity and preserved in virginity. We know you to be a mother in truth, the one who born true God. Beseech him to save our soul. Και του Πατρός και του Ιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματος, ειν και αΐ και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμήν. Your tomb, O Savior Christ, were the soldiers protecting, but they became as dead at the sight of the angel, proclaiming to the murder. Glory to you. 
O only friend of man. Both now and forever into the ages of ages, amen. O Mary, who have held in your belly the Master, we pray that you raise up those who fell in the chasm of dreadful oblivion and transgressions and trespasses. You we know to be the ready help of the sinners and the plentitude of our salvation and safety who save those who honor you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. The company of angels was amazed when they saw you accounted among the dead. Yet you will save your did destroy the might of death, and did raise up Adam together with yourself. And release all men from Hades. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Why, O women, disciples, do you mingle sweet spices with your tears shed from pity? Thus spoke the angel, shining brightly in the tomb to the myrrh bearing women. Behold the tomb and be glad, for the Savior is risen from the sepulchre. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. At early morn did the women disciples hasten to your tomb with words of lamentation. But an angel stood by them and said, The time of sorrow is past, weep no longer. But tell the apostles of the resurrection. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. As the myrrh bearing women drew near to your tomb, bearing spices, O Savior, they heard an angel saying plainly to them, Why do you count the living among the dead? For as God, he has risen from the sepulchre. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We worship the Father together with his Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity, one in essence, as we cry out with the seraphim, Holy, Holy, Holy are you, O Lord. Both now and ever into the ages of ages, amen. In that you, O Virgin, bore the giver of life, Adam, you redeemed from sin. And to Eve you gave joy in place of sorrow. He who is incarnate of you, both God and man, guided to life him who once fell therefrom. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia. Σωσον ελέησον και διαφύλαξον ημάς ο Θεός της η χαρητή. Της Παναγίας αχράντου υπερευλογημένης εν δόξου δεσποινής ημών Θεοτόκου και αη Παρθένου Μαρίας με τα πάντων των Αγίων μνημονέψαντες εαυτούς και αλλήλους και πάσαν την ζωήν ημών Χριστό το Θεό παραθόμεθα. Λόγητε σου το όνομα και δε δόξαστε σου η Βασιλεία του Πατρός και του Ιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματος νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμέν.
plundered paradise, and myrrh bearers' lamentation told of joy. For you are risen, O Christ God, granting the world great mercy. When I am distressed, O hear my pain, I cry to you, O Master. In those who dwell in the desert, grows unceasing godly fervor, for they live outside this world of illusory glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And ever into the ages of ages, amen. To the Holy Spirit is to glory and honor, as also to the Father and the Son. Therefore let us sing to the Trinity, single power. You have lifted me up to the mountains of your laws. Make me shine with virtue, O God, that I may praise you. Take me in your right hand, O word, keep me and protect me. Bless the fire of sin burn me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. By the Holy Spirit, all creation is renewed, returning to its first state. For he is equal in strength with the Word and the Father. When they said to me, let us travel to the courts of the Lord, my spirit was exalted, my heart was filled with gladness. In the house of David there is great fear, when the thrones are set there, every tribe and tongue on earth shall come forth for judgment. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, To the Holy Spirit, honor is rightly due, worship, glory, and dominion, as is meet for Father and Son. For the Trinity is one in nature, but not in persons. I will now arise as the Lord, I will set him in safety, I will speak openly on his behalf. set him in safety, I will speak openly on his behalf. The words of the Lord are pure words, silver purged of earth purified seven times. I will now arise, says the Lord. I will set him in safety, I will speak openly on his behalf. Fitting for thy majesty divine, thine all triumphant right hand, O immortal Lord, hath been glorified in strength, for by its might it brought to naught the enemy, making of the deep a path for the people of Israel. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord, thou hast God didst fashion me from dust, in the beginning with thine undefiled hands. Stretching out those very hands upon the cross, thou hast thou summoned from the earth my corrupted body, which thou didst take from the virgin maid. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord, suffering life's privation for my sake. He whose divine breath once breathed into me a soul, gaveth up his soul to death, loosing the everlasting bonds he with himself. Raise me up and glorify me to be incorruptible. Most holy Theodoka, save us. Rejoice the fountain gushing forth with grace. Rejoice, O ladder and gateway to heaven's heights. Rejoice, O shining candlestick, the golden jar and pure mount which was never hewn. For thou hast one Christ who giveth life unto all the world. Hey, Glory to you, our God, glory to you. Let us all 
all the faithful cry aloud and leap with joy today. How marvelous are your works, O Christ! How great is your might! For you have made us of one mind and brought about our agreement. Glory to you, our God! Glory to you! People of God, come let us celebrate a day of joy. Now heaven makes glad earth with all the host of angels and the companies of mortal men. Each in their varied orders keep the fast. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Seeing the great blessing we have received, how the divided members of Christ have been brought to unity. Let us clap our hands for joy and praise God who has granted us peace. Now and ever and to the ages of ages, O oh man, the swords of impious heresies have failed. For in deep reverence, pure and holy virgin, we now behold your temple made beautiful with icons, and we rejoice with holy joy. Shine on earth, O thou who has taken on the form and essence of us mortal men, and who alone does know our infirmity. Gird me with strength from on high, O friend of men, so that I may cry to thee, Holy is the living temple of thy glory sublime and ineffable. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. In thy goodness thou is my true God. It's show compassion unto me by coming down to raise me the fallen one. And thou wast crucified, lifting me on high, so that I may cry to thee, Holy is the Lord of glory, who in goodness is truly beyond compare. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord, O Christ, thou in hypostatic life, our God, who art compassionate, thou didst put on thyself my corrupted state. O Master, Thou didst destroy mortality, to the dust of death come down. Thou the third day didst rise up, to enrobe the dead with immortality. Holy Theodoga, save us, conceiving Christ God within Thy womb, by Thy Holy Spirit's grace. O Virgin, Thou wast kept holy unconsumed, for unto Moses, the giver of the law, did the flaming bush unburnt, clearly then foretell of thee, who receiveth the fire unbearable. Glory to you, our God, glory to you. The impious heretics are no longer exalted in their pride, for the power of God has firmly established orthodoxy. Glory to you, our God, glory to you. Today let the prophets at the restoration of the faith drop on us life-giving dew from heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let the mystical trumpets of Christ's apostles sound in God, give in harmony, proclaiming the reestablishment of the precious icon. Now and ever, into the ages of ages, amen. We pray you, most pure lady, shine now with the light of grace upon the faithful who have gathered in your holy house. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and Never Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. For you are the King of peace and the Savior of our souls, and to you do we give glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. 
Amen. As God, you arose from the tomb in glory, and with yourself you raised up the world, and mortal nature praised you as God, and death has vanished, and Adam dances, O Master, and Eve rejoices, now freed from her bonds, crying, You, O Christ, are he who grants the resurrection to all. Let us praise as God Almighty, him who rose on the third day and broke the gates of Hades and raised from the tombs those who lay there from of old, who appeared to the myrrh-bearers as was his good pleasure, speaking first to them, rejoice, and proclaiming joy to the apostles as the only giver of life. Therefore, with faith, the women bring the signs of victory to the disciples as good tidings, and Hades groans and death laments, and the world is glad, and all rejoice together. For you, O Christ, have granted the resurrection to all. Next, while we depict thy most divine likeness in icons, O Christ, we openly thus proclaim thy most blessed birth, all thine ineffable miracles and voluntary sufferings. Hence the demons are driven away now in great fear, and all those of evil doctrine grieve now with sorrow as once in communion with them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the prophet's likeness and the forms of the apostles, the icons and the images of the sacred martyrs, and all the saints now receive their sacred and holy comeliness and the mother even holy Zion upon high is adored with spiritual splendor and radiance of the noetic bridegroom and bride both now and forever into the ages of ages amen unto them that with love honor thy holy icon O modest one, and with one accord to proclaim thee as the true mother of our God, and to faithfully worship thee, do thou thus become a guardian and strong protection, warding off from us every vexation, O maiden, since thou art able to do all things. The Father's uncircumscribed word was circumscribed and taking flesh from you, O Theotokos. His image has been soiled, so he restored it to its primordial form, and in so doing combined it with divine beauty, and confessing our salvation, we depict it in word and deed. We depict it in word and deed. This, the mystery of the plan of salvation, this present illumination, did the prophets foretell of old with divine inspiration to us who come to the age's termination. Receiving knowledge from him, we know one Lord God glory given in three hypostases, and in giving him our soul adoration, being one in faith and right of immersion, we are vested in Christ, and confessing our salvation, we depict it in word and deed. We depict it in word and deed. On the 24th of this month, we celebrate the four feasts of the Annunciation of the Most Holy Theotokos, and we commemorate our righteous father, Artimon, Bishop of Seleucia in Pisidia. Artimon cast off the flesh like a blanket, and having nothing of earth, is sent to heaven. On the 24th, Eden welcomed Artimon. 
On this day, we commemorate the holy higher martyr Artimon Presbyter of Laodicea. On this day, our righteous father Zacharias reposed in peace. On this day, the holy eight martyrs were perfected in martyrdom by the sword and Caesarea of Palestine. On this day, our righteous father Martin of Thebes reposed in peace. On this day, the holy new higher martyr Parthenius, patriarch of Constantinople, received a martyric death by hanging in Constantinople in the year 1657. <coughs> On this day, we commemorate our righteous father Zacharias the Hospitable and Zacharias the Faster of the Kiev Caves. On this day, we commemorate the holy martyrs Stephen and Peter, who were martyred in Kazan. On this day, the first Sunday of the fast, we make commemoration of the restoration of the holy and august icons, which came to pass through the ever-memorable sovereigns of Constantinople, Michael, and his mother Theodora, during the patriarchate of the holy confessor Methodius. Rejoice as I now see venerated correctly the icons that once had been banned incorrectly. O oh, altered image of the Father, by the intercessions of your holy confessors, have mercy on us. Amen. The Red Sea was crossed by ancient Israel. They walked across dry ground. When Moses stretched his hand over the sea With his rod in the form of a cross And likewise in the wilderness They put to flight the hosts of Amalek Your church rejoices in you O Christ our God and she cries out to
us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For you are holy, our God, who rests among the saints, and to you do we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let every breath praise the Lord. God in his saints, praise him in the firmament of his power. Let every breath praise the Lord, the Lord. And that we may be made worthy to hear the Holy Gospel, let us pray to the Lord our God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believe ye. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other things in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing, you may have life in his name. of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. Your cross, O Christ, we venerate, and your holy resurrection we praise and glorify. For you are our God. Apart from you we know no other. We call upon your name. Come, all faithful, let us venerate the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to the whole world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection, and having the, endured the cross for us, he destroyed death by death. Nurse, have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your compassion, blot out my transgression. Watch me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from 
from my sin. For I know my iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil before you, that you might be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins in my mother bring me forth. For behold, you have loved truth, you have revealed to me the hidden and secret things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with his and I shall be clean. You shall wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. You shall make me hear joy and gladness. The bones that have been humbled shall rejoice. Turn your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and establish me with a governing spirit. I will teach transgressors your ways, and the ungodly shall return to you. Deliver me from blood guilt, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you will open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For had you desired sacrifice, I would have given it. You will not be pleased with all burnt offerings. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and humble heart God will not despise. To good, O Lord, to Zion in your good pleasure, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and over offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon your altar, and have mercy on me, O God.
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your compassions, blot out my transgression. The and compassion, raise the orthodox Christians in glory, and send down upon us your rich mercies. Through the intercessions of our most pure lady, the Theotokos and never Virgin Mary, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of the heavens, the supplications of the honorable and glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, the holy glorious and praise with the apostles, of the holy, glorious, and victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of our father among the saints, Nectarius, Bishop of Pentapolis, the wonder worker, patron of this parish and temple, of the holy, wonder-working, unmercenary healers, and of all your saints. We beseech you, only merciful Lord, hear us sinners who pray to you, and have mercy on us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie The mercy, compassion, and love of mankind of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Theoto, concimitera du photos, and imnis timon des megalinomen, let us honor and magnify in song the Theotokos and mother of the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim, who without corruption gave birth to God the Word, the very Sotera nasinito, 
With your divine glory, compassionate Master, and fence them around with the protection of the angelic host, subjecting the proud powers of evil beneath their feet. Now and ever and to the ages of ages, amen. Since you pure Theotokos ineffably gave birth to the master of all the condemnation of our first mother Eve has been abolished, and now we kiss his likeness in icons. A cornerstone was cut out without hands from my Φιλοξενεί μα ο Θεό τη Ιχάρητη. Κυρία Ελέισον, τη Παναγία Αχράντου, υπερευλογημένη εν δόξου δεσπίνη Σιμών, Θεοτόκου και υπερθένο Μαρία, με το απάντων των Αγίου Μημονεύσαντε, εαυτού και αλληλού και πάσαν την ζωή Μημών. Χριστό το Θεό παραθώ μεθά. Ότι σε ενούση πάσε δυνάμει των ουρανών και εσύ την δόξα να αναπέμπωση. Το πατρί και το ιό και το αγίο πνεύμα την ίν και αή και ει του αιώνα στον αιώνα. Αμήν. <laughs> Bye. 
from you. Hades was taken captive, Adam was called back. The curse was slain, Eve was freed, death was put to death, and we were given life. Wherefore in praise we cry to you, blessed are you, O Christ our God, who were thus well pleased, glory to you. Glory to the 
blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. In to Kiryu the Ithome. For our country, for the president, and for all in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Church of Christ, for this sacred metropolis, this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Senor, ten travel by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us. And protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For to you belong all. Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord is King, he has clothed himself with majesty, the Lord has clothed himself with strength and girded himself. Through the intercessions of the Theotoko, Savior, save us. <laughs> Who can speak of the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can make all his praises heard? Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Glory to 
the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Et get in it in it to kill you, the Ithomen. Σώσουν ελέησον και διαφύλαξον ημάς ο Θεός της ηχάρητης. Κύριε ελέησον. Στον Αγία Σαχράντου υπερευλογημένης εν δόξου δεσπίνης ημών Θεοτόκου και αϊπαρθένου Μαρίας. Με τα πάντων των Αγίων μημονεύσαντες, εαυτούς και αλληλούς και πάσαν την ζωή ημών. Χριστό το Θεό παραθωμεθά. Σον το κράτος και σου έστεινε η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του πατρός και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματος. Νην και αι και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμήν. Let him give thanks to the Lord for his mercies and for the wonders he has done for the children of men. Save us, O Son of God, who are risen from the dead. We see. Σάτου σαν αυτόν εν εκκλησία λαού και εν και θέντρε πρεσβυτέρων ανεσάτου σαν αυτόν. Σόησον η μάση έθεο, ο Αναστάς εκ νεκρών, Τον πεπεδημένον, του λύσεν του ζύου των τεθαντωμένων. Σόσον η μάση έθεο, ο Αναστάσε νεκρόν, ψάλλοντα εσύ αλληλούια. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and forever and to Again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. You, O God, are good and love mankind, and to you do we offer glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let the heavens and the earth praise Him. We venerate Your most pure icon, Good. 
and bow down before Christ. Save us, O Son of God, risen from the dead. We see tomb by the Judeans, and as soldiers kept watch and guarded your pure and spotless body, you rose on the third day, Savior Christ, bestowing on the world eternal life. Therefore all of heaven's powers beholding this cried out to you, O life giver. Glory to your arising, O Christ God. Glory to your eternal rule. Glory to your dispensation, O lover of humankind. Of 
lifting us. Glory to Christ who glorified you. Glory to him for your miracles. Glory to him for all the cures that he works Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages.
Of the Apostle. Let us be attentive. Blessed are you, O Lord God of our fathers, for you are righteous in all things you have done for us. Wisdom. The reading is from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, by faith, Moses. When he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jatha, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, Enforce justice, receive promises, stop the mouths of lions, quench raging fire, escape the edge of the sword, one strength out of weakness, 
became mighty in war, put foreign enemies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scoring, scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And in all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Peace be with you. And with your spirit, <laughs> alleluia, on the fourth moon. I Εξελθήν ει την Καλιλαία και βρίσκει Φίλιππον και λέγει αυτό. Ακολούθη μη. Ινδε ο Φίλιππο από Βυθσαίδα εκ τη πόλεω Ανδρέου και Πέτρου. Ευρίσκει Φίλιππο τον Αθαναήλ και λέγει αυτό. Όν έγραψε Μωυσή εν τον νόμο και οι προφήτε. Ευρίκαμε. Ισούν τον Ιών του Ιωσήφ. Του από Ναζαρέ. Και είπε να αυτόν Αθαναήλ, εκ Ναζαρέ δυνατή τη αγαθόνεστη. Λέγει αυτό ο Φίλιππος, 
Er kukje i the. I the no Jesus to Nathanael er homenon pros afton. Te legi peri aftu. I the alithos Israelitis. En o dolos u kesti. Legi afto Nathanael. Pothen me ginoskis. Απεκρίθη Ιησούς και είπεν αυτό, πρώτου σε φίλοι πον φωνήσε, όντα υπό την σικήν είδον σε. Απεκρίθη Ναθαναήλ και λέγει αυτό, ραβή, σύ ή ο Υιός του Θεού, σύ ή ο βασιλεύς του Ισραήλ. Απεκρίθη Ιησούς και είπεν αυτό, ότι είπον σύ, είδον σε υποκάτου της οικής πιστεύεις, μη ζω τούτον όψι. Και λέγει αυτό, αμήν αμήν λέγω ημίν, απάρτη όψεστε των ουρανών ανεογότα και τους αγγέλους του Θεού αναβαίνοντας και καταβαίνοντας. Επί τον Υιόν του ανθρώπου. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. At that time, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Brothers and sisters, uh, at this time, <clears throat> uh, some prayerful decision making, um, because it's natural for us to sit at this time to hear the homily, to hear the uh, exposition of the Holy Gospel, uh, it seems a better time to me, uh, hopefully it will to you as well, ultimately, that we would pass our tray at this time, instead of later after the consecration of the gifts, um, and uh, which has been, I think, a little confusing for some of us. So we'll pass that now. Um, and I'll ask those bringing the baskets forward to do so, and that the Lord our God will bless and multiply these gifts in our community and beyond. <clears throat> and for your information, we'll be doing a special offering, a special gathering later for our Sunday of almsgiving. 
<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the one God. Amen. <clears throat> In the first few centuries of our salvation, meaning after the birth, the death on the cross, the burial, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon the church at Pentecost, for the first few centuries, those who were followers of Christ, followers of the way, were um, in various phases of persecution in different parts of the world. And it was not until the fourth century that Christianity was uh, officially tolerated, and more than that, was actually elevated to be the official imperial religion. And as part of that development, the mother of the emperor, the emperor at the time was Constantine, who later would embrace Christianity in its fullness and receive baptism, but his mother, Helen, was a devout Christian. And she went on expedition, particularly to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, and the holy places that we read of in the Holy Scriptures, where our Lord was conceived, born, grew, walked, taught, healed, and was sacrificed, buried, etc. And she went to this place and found Christians there, of course, but also found that the pagans had built temples over these Christian sites to prevent the Christians from being able to worship there. And so now that the empire had become Christian, it was only natural that especially a pious member of the imperial family would now begin to Christian, to re-Christianize, let's say, the landscape, quite literally, of the Holy Land. And so gradually, pagan temples were disbanded, abandoned, torn down, and new churches were built over the sites that were traditionally for generations kept as places of veneration for Christians. For example, where our Lord was buried and rose. And today still stands the Church of the Holy Sepulcher that was founded and built by St. Helen. Now it's since been destroyed and rebuilt several times, but that's the same place that we can go and visit today. And many of us, thank God, have had that chance. This was in the fourth century. And already in the fourth century, pilgrims, they were already going to the Holy Land, but this pilgrimage, tourism, if I can use that word, increased in volume. And it attracted people who were of greater means, perhaps, than before. And we have an account, even from the fourth century, from a woman named Egeria, which is one of the only and rarest accounts that we have from that period of what the life was like of the church in Jerusalem, in the Holy Land. And she gives us a beautiful uh, explanation of what life was like there in the church. And she specifically tells us about this period of time of Lent and especially of Holy Week and Pascha. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight for you today from her writings, it's very brief, but she said in Holy Week, as the catechumens, those who had been coming to the church and had said, I want to be a Christian, and had spent time, in some cases years, learning about the faith and proving themselves to be serious about it, that finally in this last stretch leading up to their baptism right at Pascha, they would go into the church, into the oratory, and they would sit alone with the bishop. And the bishop the patriarch in Jerusalem, would now expound to them the deeper truths and secrets of the Christian faith. And she says this, that from outside of the church, you could hear the shouting for joy from the catechumens upon learning the mystery of salvation and what God had done for us and what it meant for them namely that they would be joined to the God-man Christ who is risen from the dead, and they would be able to feed of his very body and blood, and that they would have life eternal. 
and this led them, and that they would be baptized and receive remission of their sins. And this led them to exclaim with joy. Think, think of how it is at Pascha when we say Christos Anesti, and all of you say what? Christos. Wrong. Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. One more time. Christos Anesti. Even louder than that. This is what was being heard outside. And if you think that was inappropriate, by the way, for me to say that, sorry, you're wrong. Because Christ is always risen. Today is the day of the resurrection. And we should be saying this in our hearts at all times. But we won't say it again until Pascha. This was, <laughs> this was a good warm-up, good practice. And you can be louder then. But this joy, this joy is what exuded from the windows and through the doors of that temple. And Nigeria preserves this for us. And thank God that we have this to reflect on and think, why was it when I said Christos Anesti the first time just now, you said Alithos Anesti? Why didn't your heart explode for joy? Why didn't tears come from my eyes when I said Christos Anesti? Where is our joy? Where is our abounding exuberance for our salvation? Where did it go? Are you tired? Is anybody a little sluggish because we started a little earlier than normal today? Did anybody forget and got here thinking that you were getting here early for liturgy, only to find out you weren't? Do you have many things on your mind? Are you sick? Do you have a loved one who's going through crisis? Are you bored with life? These are the things, brothers and sisters, that have a tendency to wear down our exuberance and our joy in the resurrection and our participation in it. Those of you who have been raised in the Orthodox Church and those of you who have been part of it for several years now, and maybe even some of you who are newcomers, know that today the church marks something called the Sunday of Orthodoxy. It is a major feast of the church. And it recounts for us the restoration centuries ago of holy icons into the churches. And a procession went from one of the historic churches in Constantinople at Vlacherna, and from there, the faithful marched with icons back to Hagia Sophia, the main church, after which this one is modeled but scaled down. Thank you, Costa. And they took the icons back ceremoniously because they had been taken down, in some cases ripped down, broken, burned, spat upon, stepped upon, thrown into the, into the sea. And there was a triumphant return and replacement <clears throat> of these holy images, but more than that, it was a return of orthodoxy, right belief to the church and to the empire. Now, truly, the church is never lacking right belief, or else it, seeks to, it ceases to be the, the church. And the Lord himself said, what? That the gates of death, the gates of Hades, will not prevail against my church. So the church is always one, the church is always holy, the church is always Catholic and apostolic. It's we who falter. It's we who waver. We're the ones who get the strange ideas and go this way or that. But the church, there's always a remnant. There's always the purity of the church. <clears throat> so this is what we mark today. And at the end of today's liturgy, we're going to spend a little bit more time really getting into that physically, literally, because we're going to take our icons and we're going to march out those doors and we're going to go around the, the church declaring thanksgiving to God and, and a proclamation of the Orthodox faith. But at this moment, I don't want to focus on that because this is something that, as I said, happened centuries ago, but there were still several centuries before that that the church was doing what we're doing now, namely this period we call Lent, or this great fasting period. And each week has its own theme. 
and each Sunday has its own theme. And later, newer themes were added. So the Sunday of Orthodoxy is a newer one. Okay, we've been doing that one. We've only been doing that for about 1,300 years. Okay? But for, you know, five to 700, 600 years before that, the church was doing something different. And it didn't change doing it. And what do I mean by that? If you were here in the Orthro service, the Matins, you heard things about the Sunday of Orthodoxy, but you also heard some stuff about Moses. And if you were here paying attention at the antiphons of the, of the liturgy, we heard some stuff about the prophets, and again, we heard Moses. And when we heard the epistle reading, we heard about who? Moses and the prophets. And just now in the gospel reading, we heard about the prophets. So what's going on? What does that have to do with icons? What does that have to do with the Sunday of Orthodoxy? Well, in, in one sense, we could say nothing. But on the other hand, we could say everything. Because last week, on the Sunday we call the Sunday of Forgiveness, the church remembers our exile from paradise. It remembers Adam and Eve failed, they fell, and they were exiled from paradise. And this first week of the fast has been us focusing on this collective failure, on the inheritance that we have of this polluted environment, an environment polluted by sin, and our participation in it, willingly or unwillingly. And today, this Sunday, these readings are given to us to remember that after the fall, Even though communion was broken with God, with the world, God sent us the prophets. God gave us the righteous, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He sent Moses, and he gave to Moses the law. He delivered the Israelites from the Egyptian bondage. He gave them true worship even in the desert, before arriving in a permanent home to build a temple. And then Jesus tells his initial disciples, do you believe me? Because, for example, I saw you, or I said I saw you under the fig tree. Truly, I tell you, you will see even greater things than these. You will see the heavens open and angels descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. What is presented to us at this point in our journey towards our Lord's resurrection, brothers and sisters, is a remembrance of the prophetic presence despite our fallenness. And the prophetic presence, the prophetic gift in the fallen world is none other than the presence of God in the world. And if we study the lives of the prophets and our forefathers, we see what is it that sets them apart from all those around them that they had communion and converse with the living God. And they were a remnant on the earth, a light shining in darkness. For generation after generation after generation until the true light entered the world. And upon discovering the true light, whether his initial disciples St. John the Baptist, and all those who would come to realize who Jesus Christ is, not was, their hearts, if not their mouths, would do what those buildings full of catechumens did in Jerusalem in the fourth century. Shout for joy. Because they realized, like the elder Simeon who received him at the temple as a child, that now I can depart in peace. My eyes have beheld the salvation of the Lord. And we are reminded after this week of meditating on sin, on meditating on our imperfection, our fallenness, on feeling the pains of fasting and even the pain of the failure to fast, we are now reminded, we're given a little break and a reprieve to be reminded that God has always been with us. He has never left his creation. But in the fullness of time, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us to lead us out of bondage, to free us 
and to bring joy to our hearts, to our lives. And so even though we know that joy is waiting for us at the end of this passage of time, if we already have Christ, our hearts should always be aflame. And if we miss him somehow, it's either because we do not have orthodoxia, we do not have correct thinking, we don't have correct opinion about who God is, we don't have a correct belief in who he is and what his church is, or we don't have orthopraxia, which is correct action on our part. And we're reminded today by the presence of the prophets and the initial disciples that it is important to have clear vision of who Christ is, to believe and understand as best we can who he is, and as best as we are able to follow in his commandments. This is the essence of what it means to be orthodox. Orthodoxy, brothers and sisters, is not a brand. It is not an aesthetic. It is not something that we get to parade about and beat others over the head with. It is a calling to humility. It is a calling to say, do I see clearly who God is? I'm saying I assent to who he is. I assent to what his church is. I say the creed. I submit to baptism. I say my prayers. I come to church. I endure the liturgy. I receive Holy Communion. I believe that it is the body and blood of Christ. But do I live it? Do I live with that joy of the risen Christ? Do I live with the joy of my liberation from the bondage to sin and death? And if I don't, then I'm not living orthodoxy. I'm not living with correct faith. There are many times that you've heard me preach about this, I think. It's very important to me that we understand who we are and as best we can who God is, what a gift it is to be a part of his church. But I think sometimes in my sermons, sometimes I might give the impression that the opposite of what I just said, that orthodoxy isn't a brand, that it's not this thing that we should charge out with and hold up high and say, I'm orthodox. And if I've given you that impression, then I need, to, I need to correct myself to you. Because we should be gloriously happy and joyful to be Orthodox Christians. But it is by God's grace. We choose to be part of it, but do we then live it? It's not enough to simply say that we are. You know, there's a big trend now of people flooding into the church. A lot of people are coming to the church. A lot of people are finding Orthodoxy via the internet, and glory to God, we've received many of them here. But there's something that happens in online culture where you see somebody's profile online and what do they have? Their picture is an icon of some sort and they list that they're whatever they are and then they have an icon of, a, of an orthodox cross next to their name. I'm Orthodox. A lot of them are Orthodox catechumens. A lot of them are inquirers. And they're infatuated with this thing that they found, and to a point, rightly so, as should all of us be. But in many cases, it becomes as if a brand, as if an identifying badge. I'm now part of this tribe. I'm now part of this party. I am now orthodox. I am right. And it is not about submitting to the church. It's not about humbling ourselves. It's not about asking for forgiveness of my sins. It's not about being humble. It's about I found the new thing. I found the right thing. And I'm going to give you a piece of my mind for it. This is very dangerous. And for any of you to whom this sounds familiar, if this is the way that you have found the church, I am very glad that you're here. 
And when I say that, I mean that I'm glad that you are here in person and physically to hear this and to hear the gospel and to hear the teachings of the saints and to learn how to prostrate yourself and to say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, and to live with humility and to try to humble yourself in the face of God and neighbor. Because if we do not and cannot do these things, then we are not orthodox. We distort that name. And it just becomes another party or another ideology that I become a part of. Look at what politics has become, for God's sake. Look at, look at everything in the world right now. Divisive, polarized, sectarian. This is not that. This is the place to come and hear your sins have been forgiven, go in peace and sin no more. Do not judge your neighbor and learn to say, Lord, have mercy on me and glory to you, O God, and to let Christos Anesti, Christ is risen, echo forever in your heart. We'll do our procession later. We'll carry our icons and we'll hear that this is the faith that has established the universe. This is the faith of the Orthodox. We're going to leave out a lot, by the way, that condemns a lot of people by name. And that is very important, too, because we have to know who we are and what is right. But we don't do it out of pride. We do it with great humility and a great sense of responsibility for the great gift that has been given to us and of which we are a part. And we pray with open hearts for all people to be able to share in this gift and not to judge them. So with these few things, brothers and sisters, let us say quietly and to ourselves for now until Pascha, Christos Anesti, and live it. Live it. I want that smile, Maria. I want that smile in your heart forever. And those smiles that I'm seeing out there, I want, that's what I want. And I mean, I want to have it in my heart. Christos Anesti, what, what energy, what glory, what greatness, what a gift. And he's called us with him. Let's not veer to the right or to the left, but stay orthi, straight, orthos. Anybody here ever had their teeth straightened? You went to an orthodontist, okay? They straightened out your teeth, okay? We are orthodox. We need to straighten out our opinions. We need to align ourselves, not so that we're rigidly right, but so that we're focused on the one who truly matters. Let us continue with the Divine Liturgy. <clears throat> Thank you for your prayers, Jim. <clears throat> again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom, God, the one who visited our humble state in mercy and compassion, the one who placed us, your humble, sinful, and unworthy servants before your holy glory to minister to your holy altar of sacrifice, strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit for this ministry and grant us reason when we open our mouths to invoke the grace of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts about to be set forth. That ever guarded by your might, we may ascribe glory to you, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages.
Δι βασιλιά αυτού πάντοτε νικαιαί και ει του αιώνα των complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. The pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Mm -hmm. good and beneficial for our souls and for peace for the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord, that we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord, let us ask for a Christian end to our life, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Grant this, O Lord. And waiting, O most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. The Lord. 
Nictir mondum alienu suium, methu evlogitosis, indo panagio que agatha, que sopio su pnevmati ninkeai, que istu se onas toneono. Irini passi peace be with all. love one another that with oneness of mind we may confess I will love you O Lord my strength the Lord is my foundation my refuge In wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten and not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. And suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke with the prophets. In one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand aright, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right. Master, the one who is Lord God, worshipful Almighty Father, it is truly worthy, just, and befitting the majesty of your holiness to praise you, to him, you, to bless you, to venerate you, to give thanks to you, to glorify you, the only one who is truly God, and to offer you this, our reasonable worship, with a contrite heart and humble spirit. For you are the one who granted us the knowledge of your truth, who can speak of your mighty deeds, who can make all your praises heard and describe all your wonders at all times. Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth and all creation, seen and unseen, the one who sits on the throne of glory and looks upon the abyss without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, beyond description, unchangeable, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior who is our hope. He is the image of your goodness and identical seal who depicts in himself you, the Father, the living word, the true God, the wisdom before the ages, life, sanctification, power, the true light from whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of adoption, the, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life-creating power, 
the font of sanctification from whom every creature, both rational and mystical, derives power to worship you and offer eternal glorification. For all creation is subject to you. For angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many-eyed cherubim praise you. The seraphim, one with six wings, the other with six wings, encircle you. That With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly. They cry out to each other with voices that never cease, and glorification that is never silent, singing the triumphal hymn, exclaiming, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, Holy, because you brought for us, forth for us all things in justice and true righteousness. Taking dust from the earth, you fashioned man, honored him with your image, and placed him in a paradise of delight. You promised him immortality and the enjoyment of eternal good things in the keeping of your commandments. However, when he disobeyed you, the true God, the one who created him, was deceived by the serpent and became subject to death by his own transgressions. In your righteous judgment, you, O God, exiled him from paradise to this world. You, retu- you returned him to the earth from which he was taken, planning for him the salvation of, the re- of rebirth in your Christ. Benevolent one, in the end, you did not turn away from your creation whom you made, nor did you forget the work of your hands. But because of your tender compassion, you visited him in many ways. You sent forth prophets. You sent forth prophets. You performed miracles through your saints who have pleased you in every generation. You spoke to us through the mouths of your servants, the prophets, declaring to us the salvation that is to come. You gave us the law as an aid. You appointed angels as guardians. When the fullness of time came, you spoke to us through your son himself, through whom you also made the ages. He is the splendor of your glory and the image of your hypostasis, burying everything by the word of his power. He did not regard it theft to be equal to you, the God and Father, but being God before the ages, he appeared on earth, lived among men, and having taken flesh from a holy virgin, emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. The same form is our humble body, in order to make us in the same form as the image of his glory. For since sin came into the world through man and death through sin, it pleased your only begotten Son, the one who is in the bosom of you, God and Father, born of a woman, the holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, born under the law, to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who die in Adam may be brought to life in him, your Christ. He became a citizen of this world. He gave commandments for salvation, turned us away from the illusion of idols, brought us to the knowledge of you, the true God and Father. He acquired us for himself as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, cleansing us in water and sanctifying us by the Holy Spirit. He gave himself as a ransom for death in which we were held captive, having been sold under sin. He descended into Hades through the cross in order to fill everything with himself. He loosed the pangs of death and rising on the third day, he made the resurrection from the dead a path for all flesh. Inasmuch as it was not possible for the author of life to be held by corruption, he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn from the dead, that he might be first in all things. And having ascended into the heavens, he sat at the right hand of your majesty on high. He will also come to render to each according to their deeds. He left us these gifts as memorials of his saving passion, which we have set forth before you according to his commandments. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever memorable and life-creating death on the night in which he surrendered himself for the life of the world, having taken bread in his holy and pure hands and presenting it to you, God and Father, and giving thanks, blessing, sanctifying, and breaking it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Likewise, after having taken the cup of the fruit of the vine, 
mixing and giving thanks, blessing and sanctifying it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup you proclaim my death and confess my resurrection therefore master we also remembering his saving passion and life therefore master we also remembering his saving passion and life-giving cross the three-day entombment the resurrection from the dead the ascension into the heavens the enthronement at the right hand of you god and father and his second and glorious co second coming your own of your own we offer to you in all We have done nothing good on the earth, but because of your mercy and compassion, which you so richly poured out on us, we dare to approach your holy altar of sacrifice, setting forth the antitypes of the holy body and blood of your Christ. We pray to you and beseech you, holy of holies, that by the favor of your goodness, your Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon these gifts here set forth and bless and sanctify them and manifest this bread as the precious body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and this cup, the precious blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ which was shed for the life and the salvation of the world. <clears throat> and may you unite all of us <clears throat> and may you unite all of us to one another who partake of the one bread and cup in the communion of the one Holy Spirit. And may you grant that not one of us partake of the holy body and blood of your Christ to judgment or condemnation, but in order that we find mercy and grace with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith, especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. In you,
us and those who love us and those who hate us and those who have asked us the unworthy to pray for them. Lord, our God, remember also all of your people and pour out your rich mercy on all, granting to all their requests for salvation. God, remember those whom we have failed to commemorate through ignorance, forgetfulness, or because of the multitude of names. For you are the one who knows everyone's age and name and knows every person from his mother's womb. Because, Lord, you are the help of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the afflicted, the harbor of those sailing, the physician of the sick. Be all things to all people, for you know each person and his requests, home and need. Lord, deliver this city and land and every city and land from famine, pestilence, pestilence earthquake, flood, fire, sword, foreign invasion, and civil strife. In protis mnisi di Kyrie tu archiepiscopo imon Alexiu, on charis et des aies su ecclesias en irini, son en dimonihia macro imerebunda, que orthodomuda dona logon disis alithias. Que Remember, Lord, all orthodox bishops rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember, Lord, also my unworthiness according to the multitude of your compassion and forgive my every transgression, both voluntary and voluntary. Do not impede the grace of your Holy Spirit from the gifts set forth because of my sins. Remember, Lord, the presbyter, the diaconate in Christ, and every priestly order. Do not put to shame any of us who surround your holy altar of sacrifice. Lord, watch over us in your goodness. Manifest yourself to us in your rich compassion. Grant to us a temperate and beneficial climate. Grant gentle showers to the earth for the bearing of fruit. Bless the crown of the year of your goodness. Bring an end to the schisms of the churches. Extinguish the insolence of the nations. Speedily put down the uprisings of heresies by the power of your Holy Spirit. Receive all of us into your kingdom, proclaiming us to be sons and daughters of light and sons and daughters of the day. Lord our God, grant to us your peace and your love, for you provided all things to us. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts you presented and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, our God who loves mankind, having accepted them at his holy and celestial and mystical altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may in return send down upon us the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Having asked for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, أبانا الذي في السماوات يتقدس اسمك ليأتي ملاكوتك لتكن مشيئتك كما في السماء كذلك على الأرض خبزنا الجوهر يعطنا اليوم وارزق لنا ما علينا كما نترك نحن لمن لنا عليه ولا تدخلنا في تجربة لكن نجنا من الشرير Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and into the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads to the Lord. Through the grace, compassion, and love for mankind of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, Gracious together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and forever, and into the ages of ages. Amen. Proskomen, let us.
us be attentive. Thy heart desires the holy gifts for the holy people of God. One is Lord, one is Lord, Jesus
comes in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord in creation. <laughs>
have made us worthy to partake of your holy mysteries. Keep us in your sanctification that all day long we may meditate upon your righteousness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh. Arise, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, creating an awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord our God, we thank you for the partaking of your holy, pure, immortal, heavenly mysteries which you gave us for the benefit, sanctification, and healing of our souls and bodies. Master of, of all, grant that the communion of your holy, the holy body and blood of your Christ will become for us faith unashamed, love unfeigned, abundant wisdom, healing of soul and body, protection from every opposing force, safekeeping of your commandments, and a good judgment, and a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of your Christ. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Uh, at this time, um, our children can be dismissed, the ones that are going to be carrying icons, so that they can begin to collect on the uh, portico of the church. <clears throat> How do you want to go? Now? Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ our God, the one who accepts a sacrifice of praise and well-pleasing worship, this reasonable and bloodless sacrifice, from those who call upon you with their whole heart, you, the Lamb and Son of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, the blameless calf who does not accept the yoke of sin, and who voluntarily sacrificed yourself for us, the one apportioned and not divided, the one eaten and never consumed, but who sanctifies those who partake, the one who in remembrance of your voluntary passion and life-creating third-day resurrection, proclaiming us partakers of the ineffable, heavenly, and awesome mysteries, your holy body and precious blood. Watch over us, your servants, those who minister, our leaders, the armed forces, and the people here present in your holiness. Grant us to contemplate your righteousness in every time and season, so that having been led to your will and having done the things pleasing to you, we may become worthy to also stand at your right when you come to judge the living and the dead. Deliver our brothers and sisters who are in captivity. Visit those who are in sickness. Guide those who are in dangerous seas. Give rest to the souls of those who have fallen asleep in the hope of eternal life, for the light of your countenance keeps watch. Hear all those who ask for your help because you are the giver of good things, and to you do we offer of glory. Together with your Father, who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and forever, <laughs> and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and to the ages. <laughs> Sam, Sam, we're not starting. Please be seated. <laughs> Please come forth. Our Philoptokos is passing a second and special basket today so that we can help support shelter health services. Um, and uh, it's, this is the first of our Sundays of almsgiving um, where we're gathering a special offering each Sunday that we ask the Lord will be blessed and multiplied where it is going. Uh, if you are not able to give at this time during the passing of this tray, please, uh, you are able to give uh, through our office as well uh, after today. Uh, while those are being passed, just very briefly tonight, uh, there's no Vespers here, 
we'll be going up to um, uh, Winston-Salem to the Church of the Annunciation there for their Vespers. There's festal Vespers at 6 p.m. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., we will have Matins for the Feast of the Annunciation, followed by Divine Liturgy and Lunch. And then 7 p.m., the Great Compline as we continue the Lenten services. Wednesday, the Presanctified Liturgy in the evening. Uh, noon on Friday for the same. 7 p.m., Small Compline with the Salutations to the Theotokos. And the Vespers on Saturday at 5. Today at 4 p.m., back here, is our Greek school program for Greek Independence Day uh, in our fellowship hall. You're all welcome to attend. Um, and also our six, at 6.30 p.m., our film club will have the second part of the showing of the film Nicholas and Alexandra. Our Lent Lunch and Learn series begins this week on Thursday. You can see your bulletin for more information. And next uh, week we will uh, be collecting funds in this passing of the tray for our St. Anastasia Medical Assistance Fund. <clears throat> In just a moment, brothers and sisters, we're going to process um, with the holy icons. Oh, hi. Um, and uh, we have a little bit of an order we're going to follow. And please follow the orders of um, those who will be guiding you out the doors. We're going to be processing out the center aisle to, this, to the uh, plaza, um, the courtyard, rather, of the church, the court of the church. And where we're going to do the first set of petitions. And then we're going to continue around to the south of the church and stop on this side and do the same and at the four corners until we reach the back and we'll dismiss from the portico. If you're not able to walk in procession with us, please feel free to go outside either this uh, door, the south door, or the north door. Uh, to be able to at least participate visually in the procession. So uh, in just a moment, we will begin.